course, Ralph Sorella passed away this past week. And Ralph started off as Howard Stern's stylist. Um, they were longtime friends. He was only 58 years old when he passed away. And we just played Ralph probably for the first time on this show on the most recent newest episode of WATP because we were looking back at how John yeah. had been falling out with Howard long after he left the show. And you could tell that uh, that Ralph did not like John. And like everybody so. else on the <laughs> yes, show. Yes, correct. He had a, like a lot of good reasons for it. And Howard, I'm listening to his episode on Wednesday, and he's talking about how much Ralph meant to him and how sad he is of Ralph's passing and everything. And the big point he kept talking about was the fact that Ralph never wrote a book, never went to the press, never said mm -hmm. anything about Howard Stern, never revealed anything about Howard Stern. Howard even used weird words. Like he, he goes, he never betrayed me. Yeah. I was like, why did you use betray? That's a weird word to use. Yeah. It sounds like there's something really interesting. <laughs> it sounds like he could have. Yeah, real salacious <laughs> going on. So there's speculation that they're gay lovers, and that could be what's going on. I don't know. But Ralph never said anything. There was yeah. a caller that called in and said, what was Ralph's sexuality? Do you know Howard? And Howard goes, I'm keeping, he kept all my secrets. I'm keeping all his secrets. Like, it's a weird way to answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, nothing weird about that. <laughs> okay. So then two hours and 45 minutes into the show, the Howard Stern show, Fred Norris speaks up and Fr this is crazy. They're all talking about Ralph and what he meant to the show and how they felt about him and everything else. And Fred decides to take a shot at stuttering John as they're talking <laughs> about the fact that Ralph could have talked mad shit and never did. Uh, uh, Fred, you want to say anything about Ralphie Boy? I don't know if you were close with him or not. Or I, I was not as nearly as close as you, for example. I mean, I really felt for you yesterday when Gary called me. I, I He was actually like sobbing on the phone telling me the news. I mean, I knew it was yeah. really, really because he first started. I have really something to tell you. And he was sobbing. And I'm going, oh, fuck, you know, like what the hell happened? And then when he said Ralph had passed, I was like in total total disbelief and in total shock and i also thought of you and i thought of robin and how what what good friends you know you were with him and uh, you said something earlier which i thought of and i think it bears repeating how loyal he was to you there have been so many scumbags who have come on the show i hate to say it that worked here that went on to uh quote unquote greener pastures and wrote, wrote many books and stories and things like that about what they said it was like to work here. And to Ralph's credit, he never said anything about you. And he could have. He could have cleaned up. I mean, you know, it, he just, it was amazing to me. And he was loyal to you. He was a friend. So that was really interesting. And he could have. Like, well, what, yeah. what are you trying to say, Fred? He could have, just as I could if I wanted yeah, to. Yeah, like, Fred's like, almost like hinting, like, I got some shit out of you too, motherfucker. That was, right. What does everyone know that I don't know? <laughs> that whole thing was very weird. All this points to the thing that I've been saying for a while that I think Howard is gay. I never thought that before. Yeah. But it's seeming more and more like that's a possibility here. It's really bizarre. Just the way that they're all talking about this is really bizarre. But I love the fact that he took a shot at Suttering John directly. And he goes, I think Fred's point there was... Ralph actually had things that were interesting to say. John's whole beef was they didn't pay me enough money to what we were talking about a week ago, where it's like, well, just be grateful that it turned into your career with the night show and all the doors yeah. that opened for you. You wouldn't have gotten the deal with Atlantic records. You wouldn't have been on. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. You wouldn't have had all these cameos and movies and TV shows. It's all because of being on the Howard Stern show. They hired you sight unseen. They gave you an opportunity and you're, you have no, no gratitude. But, but that's the weird thing. According to him, it had nothing to do with that. He could have done this on his own. Yeah, I know. His third grade teacher saw potential in him. Like yeah, there was I was going to no make it in show him. business. It just so happened my right. thought was on the Howard Stern show. <laughs> I got distracted. He's such a fucking asshole. Such an idiot. But anyway, I love that. Fred Norris someday coming on WATP to do a Stuttering John segment. Fingers crossed. I hope that's not the kiss of death for uh, Fred, because that's what I said about Ralph <laughs> last oh, week. So, yes. yes, that would suck. All right. So I want to get into some stuff from this week from Stuttering John. Starting off with, this guy put together this amazing video in Dabbler's Anonymous. His name is Schooly Abar. It's S-K-O-O-L-I underscore A underscore B-A-R. Schooly Abar. 
he made this video and I have clips of it. It's it's over eight minutes long. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but it's pretty much counting down all of the beers that John has over his one episode on Thursday. And they count eight or nine. And it's funny I, how you see his behavior change. Go ahead. I forgot. I brought a prop for this segment. Oh, <laughs> just go! <laughs> I felt so dumb. I visited my dad yesterday and he had one in the fridge and me trying to explain to a 75 year old man why I had to take one of his <laughs> cores home with me when I left. Well, I got to say, you're doing a really bad tab Burt impression right now. <laughs> that guy went through like 30 cores out of this show. But um, all right. So it starts off on this video that I want to play for you. John's talking to his politics friends. And I think this is a pretty good representation of what's going on in John's head as they're droning out about politics. <laughs> and has now said that if Hunter Biden doesn't testify in private instead of in public, he's going to, he, they want to jail Hunter Biden. While he, the hypocrite that he is, completely avoided a subpoena <laughs> so, from Congress. Yep. So it doesn't really, reality. <laughs> they zoom in and, on John and, and it's the just like dancing monkey. are merely ships that don't even pass <laughs> in the night. <laughs> I'm not sure they're in the same hemisphere. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter what Biden says. Uh, what they will do is what they're going to do. But all right. That being said, I mean, Major, how do you feel about him saying that? <laughs> what an interview right there. Okay, yeah, no, that's a good point. But that being said, oh, shit, I have nothing. Uh, you say something now, Army that Major. Said, Army Major, it's your turn to talk. I'm yeah. just, I'm just here to uh, moderate, baby. He's zoning out, yeah. and then he finishes his beer, and he's like reaching over. Is the guy still talking and cracking another beer? Why does he place his beers on the other side of his computer? He can that, easily just crazy. put them next to him. He doesn't have to reach over his computer to grab the beer. He still starts every show adjusting things. Also, I it's know, like, dude. The fuck you think that's cool? Is that a weird flex for you? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Also, and I think I have a clip of this coming up later. Everyone's fucking with him now and sending delivery people to his house, yeah. delivering beer oh. and chicken wings from 7-Eleven and all this kind of shit. And watching John get out of the couch or get off the couch. Oh, it... So belabored. I don't know if it's hemorrhoids or he's just out of shape or both. It's a four or five step process for him to get up off the couch. There's probably some so shit going are... on we don't know about yet. Probably, yeah. So people are doing this. They're timing it so that this is happening during his show? Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're purposely doing it. In fact, here's uh, here's our first example of many that we have today of John. The show has to come to a halt so that he can get his uh, deliveries that are coming in. I go to these shows not just to laugh, which All right, I... Right. Hold, hold on, hold on, thought. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> Hello. Come on in. Does that guy think he delivery? has to freeze with his what hands? Like in that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. He, he goes, he goes hold on. That? He's just like, we're not playing red light, I, green light. <laughs> I thought shot. John paused him somehow. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no. uh, time in. Now they're in the middle of a conversation. John hears a knock on the door and starts yelling, come on in. Normally, when people are delivering things to your house, you open the door for them. For a total yeah. stranger, yes. Yes. John yells to everyone to come in. A lot of people are uncomfortable with that. They're like, what? What's going to happen that's when I come into this That's how you get place? murdered. Yeah, like, right. As a exactly. delivery person, that's how you are killed. And John gets annoyed with people who don't come right in right away. What is it? Uh, some uh, highlights. Some brewskis. Oh, brewskis. All right. Hold on, Brian. <laughs> Watch him get up. Oh, he couldn't see it that well on that one. All right. So the, he's like, what do you have? That's always the thing when someone delivers something. Yeah. Uh, the highlights. I do like seeing all the watermarks all over his backdrop. Oh, I know. <laughs> Jesus. God forbid he'd pay the the $10 license fee. Why, why didn't he just Why didn't he just cut his camera and get up and do mute himself yeah. and do like he's not contributing anything to this conversation. Yeah, These guys, two I'll be right back. Keep going right. without him. Yeah, he he can just leave it. I'll be right back guys, you know, and then oh and then come back. But instead, he turns into this whole production where he's yelling at the delivery guy and so then uh here's another delivery that comes in. Miller High Life. Really? Yeah. That's Yes, like, that that reminds me of like nineteen nineteen seventy six. That's <laughs> I don't know. I didn't order anything. You didn't order anything? No. Did they pay for it? No. Yeah. Don't worry about. It. Get out of here. Did they pay for it? No. All right. Then get out of here. 
He's Jesus so rude to Christ. these people, too. These poor people are just delivering whatever the app tells them to deliver. They're picking it up. Yeah. They're bringing it over to his yeah. house. He's just like, get out of here. They're not picking out a gift for him. <laughs> I know. I, I don't want, I didn't want that. <laughs> but also, the, the very telling thing is, is it paid for? Oh, yeah. yeah. Is oh, it paid yeah, for? Yeah, definitely. Right. Because I will accept anything that you give me because I am a loser. Who will take anything that people send so me? So wait, you can order anything wait, wait, and have wait, it sent to his on, house. Carl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, Carl. Let's relax here. I do want to open this up to your listeners. Anything you send to me, I will accept. What I mean, if I don't have to pay for it, just give me anything. If you say so, you're that's on. Fucking creepy. <laughs> it's so weird. All right. So now, this is proof right here. This is one of my favorite clips of all time. I've been saying for a while, John has no business being on a political show let alone hosting a political show. He doesn't know anything about politics. And of course, he's got the, the liberal Democratic talking points that he regurgitates from MSNBC. You can tell he just watches these opinion shows and then comes out and, and spouts all this stuff. So now John is actually going to come up with his own political idea here. It, it seems like this is one of, uh, one of the few times he has a thought on his own. And it shows how dumb he is. He doesn't even understand how the political system in the United States works. Is it possible that Obama could be Newsom's running mate? No. As vice president? No. So he can't even be vice president? No. No. <laughs> he cannot be He cannot be in uh, line for succession for the presidency because he's already served two terms. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the fact that these two laughed at him yeah. while shaking their heads no tells you everything you need to know. Like, that's insane. And Carl, yeah, you're right. He should not be doing a political show. But I also think it's easy to pick on him for this because he's doing this. I think it makes more sense to say he shouldn't be doing any show. He's, he's not good at anything. When he did that Hollywood show for a hot minute, he was terrible yeah. at that. He's <laughs> terrible at his other show. He's awful. All right, I, I'll prove you wrong, dog. Here are the top 10 <laughs> comedies. Uh, Caddyshack. Um, Animal House. <laughs> Almost Famous. Meet the Fockers. <laughs> Almost Famous. Almost Famous. I know my we've kids asked didn't this. get it. Let's don't talk about my kids. We have asked this over and over, but what do these guys have in it for them to appear on this show? What the fuck is the problem? Did they lose a bet? Rich Jetta is constantly defending John, too. Even when he got up wow. to grab a delivery, he was gone for like four minutes. Rich Jetta is reading the chat, and he's going, I'll tell you why we go on John's show. Oh. It's because John's a great guy. You don't know John like we do. What? The guy in the middle, Brian Karam, I think is his name, is just a dud. Yeah. He's just yeah. nothing. I think he probably was a Stern fan mm. and just happened to be talking to Stuttering John. He's the kind of guy that John thinks we all are. We're like, ooh. I can talk to stuttering John Melendez? <laughs> wow. I want to be his friend. I think he's that guy. I mean, there was, a, there was a time where I seriously considered reaching out to stuttering John and just being like, John, come on my show. We just talk about an 80s movie. Your choice, whatever. You don't have to get angry at anyone. It's yeah. not a joke or anything. But, man, the way that he turns on everyone, I am so glad I didn't do that because he would have turned on me by now. And he would have doxed me, would have done all the dumb stuff he's trying to do to Cardiff and everything like that. Like, I'm so thankful, first of all, that he did block me on Twitter by just being associated with your show. It's all it takes. It's very easy to get blocked Man. by, uh, yes. by John. <laughs> Robo Shitstain in the Discord says that Karim is a press corps reporter for Playboy and CNN. Playboy hmm. has a press corps reporter? He has White House access. He knows John via the Midas Touch Brothers. Hmm. Yeah, I know John made a lot of connections with different uh, liberal politics, um, journalists, reporters, whatever they are. But I, I can't imagine anyone would take him seriously ever again no, when suggesting it, that Barack Obama could be the running mate for Gavin Newsom. And it sounds crazy that this guy who has legitimate credentials would be on this show or would entertain even talking to Stuttering John. Is this his one and done appearance? Has he been on no, here before? Or he's on since? all the time. Him and Richard oh, O'Jenner are on almost every week now. Well, Ojeda, I get it. Like he's he's really in, I, I I don't know, the John business. I don't quite understand why, but this other guy, I don't know. I never heard of him. All right. The other thing that John does is he likes to repeat himself. No. That's a good way to get your point across is to say it 
over and over and over again. This is the silliest thing from the shit way. He's trying to create this false narrative. The shit way is just trying to create some Ooh. false narrative. Shit so much way. saliva. And now, this is the false narrative. A false narrative set up by the shit wayer. The shit wayer. He has to create this false narrative. Shit wayer. Shit wayer. But the shit wayer. Again, this is all from that video, Schooly A bar, that I found on Dabblers Anonymous. All from the same episode. Yeah, that's it's amazing. unbelievable. This How episode is sponsored by the <laughs> the word shitware and false, false narrative. narrative. <laughs> How long does he have to leave these super chats up here? Like, how long has this one been sitting up? I know there? he just gets distracted. <laughs> his own nonsense. So one more video that I pulled from this video, and he gets another delivery on this show. Something to lie about. What? Who is it? Who? I didn't order pizza. Go away. Do not disturb. I didn't order it. And find out who did so you can report him. Find out whoever called, oh get God. their phone number, and report them. To who? Just who do you report them to? What is it? Does the, the FBI get the pizza involved? Pizza police. <laughs> What's he talking about? <laughs> to Vinny. But do you see though, as John gets drunker, yes. he gets meaner and becomes more and more of a prick. Absolutely. <gasps> this is his real personality coming out, and he's he puts us out on the internet. Yeah, he's on the internet. Here's the knock on the door. What? Yeah. As if people are gonna be like, oh hey man, I uh, just brought you a pizza. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, my knock didn't explain this. Yeah, right. I, I, wow. Not for nothing, but there's this phrase called don't shoot the messenger. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. not this fucking guy's fault. Why he's mad at this guy? He should get up, go, listen, man, I'm sorry. I've got these fucking people pranking me. They keep sending me shit. Yeah. I it, didn't order this pizza. Fucking Richard Ojeda defends this guy. Oh, you don't know him like we know him? Yeah. We just heard him berate someone for no fucking reason. Yeah. And this is the guy you want to defend? We know better than you, Richard. Yeah. Yeah, could you imagine? Could you imagine talking to a delivery person like this? No, I don't care if it's the first one that showed up or the tenth one that night. Come on, this I would is never talk terrible. To anyone like this? If that was my first no. time on his show, I would have tapped out. I would have been like, "Okay, yeah. All bye." Right. All right, wow. let's let's get into more fun stuff that John does, like threaten oh, me. <laughs> it's been a while. See, the, <laughs> Cardiff and Duke are having all the fun lately yeah. because what Cardiff is doing, and actually, this isn't even the video. I don't think that John struck, but. Cardiff is doing, he's finding out all of the people who are members of John's channel because he puts it on members only chat and then Cardiff finds out who's chatting and then he adds them to a list of people to shame them for supporting Stuttering John. I don't know how ethical that is. I'm not going to debate that. I'm not doing that personally, but that's what Cardiff's up to. And then of course, Tukey did the review of John's children, adult children giving wedding speeches at Susanna's second wedding to their new stepdad, Aaron. And so they did a show that was transformative reviewing those videos. John put a strike on that. He put a strike on the, what was the other one that they put a strike on for Cardiff? It was, uh, oh, it was the video that we put on this show where John goes, and Cardiff emailed me today threatening me. Yes. And then Cardiff pulled up the email that showed that Cardiff didn't threaten him. John threatened Cardiff back the other way. So for some <laughs> reason, John thought he could strike that for who knows why. But. Let's not forget that I'm still over here making fun of John, too. So he's going to let me know that uh, I'm not in the clear. Because as you know, <laughs> producer Chris has been with me this whole time. He'll tell you, when I get threats like this, I get real nervous. I pull back. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. go, all right, I'll stop podcasting for a while. No, John, you idiot. Just the opposite every fucking time. Hey, Lady K. You're going to call in why you are yet? All right, so... Shuli's wife's crystals is constantly telling John I'm doing things. She's constantly saying I'm tweeting this or I'm talking about that. Right now, she gave John two bucks to say Carl is calling NYU live on air about your degree. Now, the big controversy right now is did John or did John not graduate with a four-year degree from NYU? A lot of evidence that he did not. We'll get into that later. 
But John is reading that super chat, believes it, always believe everything that she yeah. writes or he writes, Shuli's wife's crystals writes to John. He always believes it every fucking time. He's such a moron. This person is just trying to get a reaction out of you and you always fall for it. <laughs> so, all right. John thinks that I'm calling NYU live on the air. <laughs> oh, good. Say hi to all my teachers like Mick Cribbin. Oh, yeah. My camera one class with Boris. Hi, can I talk to stuttering John Melinda's teachers, please? <laughs> uh, right away, sir. <laughs> In which order? Boris? Alphabetical? Yeah. We Boris have them all right here. work there? <laughs> all these I guess this is dead, proof. John. This is, must be proof that John graduated because he took classes there and knows professors' names. Okay. Yeah. It is also weird that he calls them teachers. If mm-hmm. he did go to college, they're not called <laughs> teachers, but okay. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Call, call them all. Go What's ahead, Lady What's... K. Also, Do... I, I would never call NYU. It's not what I do on my show. I'm not trying to fact check. I'm not an investigative journalist. But the idea that he's like, call all my teachers. No, no, no. I would just call whoever's in charge of knowing who graduated each year and have them check the records. <laughs> Why would I call each one of your fucking professors? It doesn't make sense. It's not a way to go about that. We're not doing a background check. Hey, John. Uh, so I called everyone I knew at NYU and I spun my wheels for a couple months and came up with nothing. You were right. That was a really bad strategy on my part. Where's yeah, my John, hundred bucks? I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, John, I was I was just wondering, was Boris the first or last name of your teacher? <laughs> okay. Do it. Do it. I love it. I love it. Keep it up, Lady K. A strike's coming for you, Lady K. Ooh. Oh yeah. Uh-oh. oh yeah. Keep it up, Lady K. Keep it up. If it's not transformative. School. Is he talking about his son again? Uh, if oh. it's not, so he's trying to threaten me saying that I did something that wasn't transformative. Yet last night on John's show, he went back and watched the E channel Howard Stern clip where he was fucking with Ralph Sorella. He looks so bad in this, too, because Ralph Sorella doesn't feel good. He's sleeping on the couch in an office, and John goes in and just yells boo in his ear twice until Ralph finally goes, what, John? And then John just keeps fucking with him, so Ralph finally just chucks a shoe at him and goes, go away. And then John's the victim. Oh, I can't leave through a shoe at me. What's wrong? But meanwhile, John's watching this whole thing without pausing, without commenting on it. It's not transformative at all the way that John's doing it. This is something that definitely is copyrighted that he shouldn't be able to get away with. <laughs> But I want to point out to John, who's telling me what is transformative content, something that John didn't even understand the concept Mm -hmm. of not too Mm -hmm. long ago. I did just win. I got a strike from Simon & Schuster. Ever hear of him? Lots of (laughs) shoolies at work over there. And uh, I was able to uh, win my... uh, I I countered them. We had a little dispute. And I was able to win that claim. So I was able to put my video back up of us goofing on Julia Fox's audiobook. So I'm not afraid of you, John. Mm. You're broke and you don't understand the law, which is something that I'm <laughs> going to point out here. He's such a fucking idiot when it comes to how the law works. So this is No Way Jose pointing out that, uh, and No Way Jose on, on Facebook. Is bringing up some good points about this lawsuit he's threatening Tukey with. And mm-hmm. again, I want to point out Tukey had that video. John put a strike on it. So Tukey put it up on Rumble. I think that has 7,000 views on it on Rumble. So it's the Streisand effect. John keeps bitching about this video. So, and, and every time he bitches about it, El Harible yeah. and Tukey are like, hey, you can find it on a Rumble page. It's right there. It's keep, people keep watching it. So more and more people are seeing it than whatever, <laughs> which is hilarious. And so this is this is John not understanding how the law works at all. Uh, uh, yeah, no way, Jose. Don't worry about me. I, I'm well equipped. All right. So no way, Jose writes. Your ex-wife gave you the copyright of a vid that a guest filmed of your kids. I just know that the lawyers are going to involve your family, and it's going to get messy. Please make sure you have all your ducks in a row before going the lawsuit route. 
sounds like pretty good advice because we are getting families involved. Who filmed this? Who has the yeah. ownership of it? His family is there. His wife, their stepdad. Could get messy. Pretty good advice. Mm-hmm. Does John listen to this? No. He's got his own idea here. For this lawsuit. Rocco don't know what's coming. Rocco has no idea what's coming. Because I have. I have the video. And Joey, the crap they were saying, no judge is going to be cool with the stuff they were saying. You know, uh, the anti-trans shit, the anti-African-American shit, no judge is going to view fucking Rocco (laughs) and go, oh, um, that's cool. No, no. Especially not a judge in California. Skull. Skull. How articulate. John has no idea how the law works. He's like, the judge is going to rule that it's not cool. My verdict, <laughs> not cool. Yeah, we're all going to watch it in his chambers. And he's going to turn around and be like, not cool, guys. Yeah, he's going to be like, Rocco, please uh, approach the bench. I'm disappointed in you, Rocco. <laughs> These are very mean jokes that you're yeah, telling. John thinks it's going to be Tukey there and a floating potato. Yep. I, I 100% want to see. I want to see a puppet in a courtroom. Like, there's so. I want to see that broadcast. Oh, that would be amazing. I was watching El Harible this morning, and he was saying Tukey will definitely be in this courtroom. I mean, he won't be able to control him, obviously. But, you know, he'll probably be up there next to his attorney. And then right behind him, you see Tukey watching like, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking awesome. Oh, my God. We're flying to California or Colorado, wherever we have to go to be a part of this courtroom proceeding. I want to see this. They might put it on C-SPAN or something like that. (laughs) You're right. Good point. Court TV might actually play this one. (laughs) Fucking fantastic. So John literally thinks that the First Amendment, the First Amendment of the Constitution of this country doesn't exist. It's it's the one everyone knows, the right to free speech. It's the one where it's like, hey, are you allowed to like make fun of that guy's family? Yes, you are. Yeah, but even if his family has a person who, who transitioned, well, yeah, and that's how free speech works. There's not like exceptions to the rule. Yeah, I know, but it hurt this guy's feelings really bad. Uh-huh. So still free speech, <laughs> still perfectly legal. Nothing you could do about it, dummy. So now... No way Jose comes back and tries to explain to him, listen, man, if you're, if this is a copyright thing, it doesn't matter what they say about your kids. I don't know what this means. Is this the lady who hurt her back chimney sweeping? Do you understand that? No, I don't. Yeah. Who knows with that guy? Yeah. Uh, You know, no way Jose, I thought you were like cool. And now you're He's actually giving you good advice right now. So what he writes now is, is dark humor illegal? Is it a copyright lawsuit or is a civil rights lawsuit for the racist slash trans comedy? Yeah. What, what are you trying to accomplish here? It reminds, me, it reminds me of when Michael Popak was arguing that Sirius XM owed John money for right to publicity. And his argument was he was making $30,000 a year on the Howard Stern show. Okay. A completely different company was paying him an amount of money that he agreed to. And worked for. What's that to do with fucking anything? So I think John's been getting a lot of bad legal advice from people and has no idea what he's talking about. Cool. Now you like, is dark humor illegal? It's, is it a copyright lawsuit or a civil right lawsuit with a racist trans? It's a copyright lawsuit, but still doesn't matter. That's, that's John. It doesn't matter. The judge says John gets it's caught, not cool. Whenever John gets caught in something that doesn't make any fucking sense, he always goes, yeah, but it doesn't matter. Well, no, it does. that's the only thing that matters. Right. What are you? What is this lawsuit about? What are your grounds? Like no one reads Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, Remember right. That gem. Yeah, yeah. They changed his Wikipedia to say he didn't graduate from MIT. He was like, that doesn't matter. <laughs> who's who's gonna try to find out facts about me on Wikipedia? Anyone who's looking for facts about you? Yeah. Again, the just the, just the idea of the judge going, okay, this is a copyright law. Copyright lawsuit. Yeah. But the things you said aren't cool. So yeah. <laughs> he's gonna <laughs> throw some shade. Mr. Melendez. <laughs> it's unbelievable. He's so out of it. He has no understanding of what he's even doing. All right. So John, this is uh we were playing those clips before of the delivery guys coming on Thursday. This is Friday show now. It's Joey C. It's Joey C's birthday. We're all celebrating Joey C's Aww. birthday. Happy birthday, Joey C. Very exciting for everyone. And so Vince the Warrior decides to send Miller High Life to John. And John's upset because Vince the Warrior is happy to send him stuff. 
But when John calls him, Vince doesn't answer his phone. Oh, right. Which is interesting only because, again, I was watching El Harible this morning and Vince was sending stuff to El Harible from 7-Eleven. And so El Harible called Vince and Vince answered, answered immediately. <laughs> so just <laughs> FYI. But I'm not going to sit here and take shit from this idiot. No, this is Miller High Life. Oh my God, he's drinking a forty. Got to get a piece How of the high life. This man, because <laughs> it was she courtesy <laughs> of Vince the lawyer, <laughs> who, by the way, this guy has plenty of free time to keep sending me fucking COVID tests and O'Doul's, <sighs> but he doesn't have the time to talk to me on the phone. And to me, that's ridiculous. Skull. Yeah, but I'll keep taking the free shit in the meantime. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. He almost had a falling out over this O'Doul's that guy said. He got very upset with Vince Deloy for sending O'Doul's, not realizing there was other beer packed underneath the O'Doul's. But he threw such a fit that he ran the delivery guy out of there, oh wouldn't let him take his license. Never got to the punchline. Yeah, never got to the punchline, decided he was no longer friends with Vince the Lawyer. This yeah, but, is insane. It's crazy. This but, isn't normal human behavior. <laughs> you don't say. So I just want to explain this to John. I know he watches these clips that we do. So, John, the reason why Vince the lawyer fucks with you but doesn't answer when you call him is, A, you're annoying and needy. B, you're difficult to be friends with. C, people hate the text that you send that just says, call me. I've gotten it. Vince has gotten it. It's annoying. We're adults. You don't do that. Don't tell us what to do. D, he doesn't like you. He's trolling you. And E, you're a fucking moron if you keep falling for it. He doesn't want to be your friend. He wants to fuck with you. I have to tell John this every fucking week. And he's like, I know Carl says that you're a troll. He is a troll. It's not just me saying it. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, God damn. And it's... He just keeps getting him back in his good graces, too. It's so funny. I know. How he just keeps falling it's, for it. Yeah, it's like the car pulling away from someone, and then they stop. <laughs> yeah, <and> no! <laughs> 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 or this, the stunt Joe do, Frank. He's had the yeah. fucking dollar bill on the yes. fishing line. Yep. yep. Except for, but like, Scott the be like, oh, is, okay, you're fucking with me. He just yeah. keeps doing it. But to, to win him over, though, you just hand him a six-pack. That's it. That's, That's all it takes. Then it's all good. Or a 40 in this matter. Oh I can't. Right. I can't believe that's a that's a red flag when you see somebody over the age of twenty two drinking a forty. Yeah, it's not great. Well, well over the age of twenty two, how about over the age of fifty five? <laughs> that that's where things are getting fucking nuts. Like this is not yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so John gets a super chat from a person named at Stuttering John Clips on YouTube. I recommend checking that out. Aster and John Clips has some good news for John in his battle to prove that he did graduate. He does have his degree from NYU. Uh, oh, there you go. Sterling John Clips. Oh, great. How do we get it? Go ahead. Sterling John Clips. I'll let you do a plug. How do we get it? So people can fucking. Yeah, they don't even have to fucking. Yeah, it's hanging on my wall. Okay. So he wrote, I have the video because John claims he has proof. If you look at the old Zillow listing of his apartment, the photo of his living room, you can see it's framed. You can't see what's in the frame, but there is a frame about the size of someone that might be a degree or something. Fair enough. Potentially. Case closed. <laughs> but, but he doesn't have that anymore? Well, I, I guess it got shipped out to his Florida house in a box somewhere. He doesn't know where. Oh, uh, I thought maybe he pawned it or something. Where it is. So this is the video that at Sonny John Clips is uh, referring to. Wait a minute. Go right. There, freeze that. Full screen. Okay, freeze that. Tighten up on that way. Vector in on that guy by the back wheel. Zoom in right here on the spot. <laughs> so it says Bob Levy <laughs> as New York University and Bob Levy's name in it. But John doesn't know that. So later on in the show, John, the guy tells him, go to YouTube and put in, you know, whatever the search is so that John can find this. And so John does that. Okay. Joe, can you see it? 
I can, yeah. Oh, what is Very, that? So this is my old apartment. This is my condo. Oh, yeah, yeah. You get kind of green in the kitchen or something? Yeah, yeah. That was my ex-wife always liked the, you know, that color Don't for our kitchen her. in our first house. So I, <laughs> so I repeated it. So here we go. Victor Reno and that guy by the back of you. Zoom in right here on this spot. Ah. Uh, <laughs> He's fucking with me, you see? Wow. Yeah, you know, you, just when you... you think the guy, you know, well, at least it's not a naked freaking yeah, girl be careful. Shit or anything. Center and John Clips, just when I thought you were actually cool. Dude, Center and John Clips, look at the avatar for him. It's John making yeah. the goofiest face ever. He's like, I thought we were friends. Yeah. What's going on? That's yeah. what I was thinking when I saw that. I was like, well, <laughs> you know you're being troll. You should know. You should. Oh. You really should know. No, he thinks everyone's a super fan. Oh, that's He's, great. He really does. He assumes. I mean, my name is in their name. <laughs> devil story, and I'm the devil. Devil story must like me. <laughs> it's so stupid. All right, so now here's another delivery person coming over to the house. This is Friday night. <laughs> yes. Can I help you? Can I help you? Stop yelling in the mic. Someone knocking? Get Hello? Up. What is it? What is it? Is it beer? Do I have to pay for it? Uh, all right. Joey, I'll be right back. All right, buddy. I don't turn down free beer. <laughs> yeah, we know. There you go. Go for it. Can you get up? All right, Let's hold see. on. Uh, uh, Keep him occupied, Joe. I will. All right. Leo Gunn, thank you for the happy birthday, buddy. He can't just get up. Oh. He has to scooch down and fight something to hold on to. He <laughs> tried, <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah, he he tried to get going. up on the... Uh, why He couldn't get up on the left side. He had to, like, roll his way over yeah. to the right to get it's out like of a, there. a turtle on his back. It's unbelievable. <laughs> oh, my God. And he just I'm cringing. It, these 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 interactions with he and delivery people really it makes me anxious. Yeah. I don't like this. No. I just can't imagine someone delivering someone in my home, which I have done quite often, mm -hmm. and yelling, What? That's not yeah. how you respond to that. You get up and you answer the door. <laughs> or, or how about this? Here's a crazy fucking idea. You put a sign on your door. This has been happening multiple times every fucking episode. Put a <sighs> sign on the door that says, I'm currently broadcasting, but please come on in to deliver this or something. So you don't just yeah. come on my show. <laughs> scream one at everybody all the time. <laughs> what are your credits? Let's see if you can be on my show. Uh, so here are a bunch of people just trolling John in the chat with WTP references. Good. Um, Vinny, thanks to Buzz. Carl has a beer trap mouth. Can you make a song for him? Not yeah, for two bucks. Fun. Come on, man. Dom Delaware. Vinny. Way, that's uh, Vinny's Safatwap. Uh, no, wait. I, I'm, I'm pronouncing that wrong. Vinny's su, Vinny's. Uh, no, you you did it right. A fat wop. I'm sorry. <laughs> Vinny's a fat wop is the name. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, why I struggle with that. Song for him. Not for two bucks. Come on, man. Dom Delaware saying to us, Joey, they played your fight with your wife on WATP. What fight? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what up. they're talking about. Youper Pooper. Lady K's boyfriend, Brandon, has small yeah, hands. You know what that it. means? Nailed it. No. <laughs> Lady K's boyfriend, Brian. Ooh, uh, I don't know what that means. So, uh, Brad Don from the Drew and Mike show, the producer from the Drew and Mike show. Let's see who they're referencing is that. <laughs> Just fun to watch these guys fucking with him. He has no clue. He's just running his show like this Come is on, normal. this one's great though. All Joey right. upset stomach, don't crap the bed in sheets. I know it's it's nonsense. That's that's Shuli's wife's crystals. Always two bucks, always fucking yeah. with people. Awesome. All right, so this is great because this whole time Joey's going, Have you seen the cartoons that we're in together, John? And of course it's Aqua Teen Hunger Force, where Carl <laughs> from that show is John's voice. And Joey is Master Shake, but they're doing this new thing where it's uh, Dabblefeld or Felt or whatever it is. It's a Seinfeld thing. And so John finally watches one of these for the first time. And in this interaction, it's, it's the Seinfeld one where he's talking to the person voice it, 
Monique from Radio Gunk is the voice mm-hmm. of the, the woman that he's, he's interacting with here, who, by the way, I uh, met in person for the first time this past week, and she was lovely. And uh, I'll plan on getting together with her again in the future. We're not too far from each other uh, from our uh, WTP South studios. And so, John, all right, let's take predictions. Have you seen this yet? No. This just happened no. last night. Do you think no. John will be offended by this cartoon? How do you think he'll react to it? He'll I say, feel like it, his knee-jerk reaction is to be offended, but I'm I'm thinking he, he won't get it. Okay. What do you think? Oh, he'll be offended. Okay. You won't believe this. <laughs> There is he? No, he, I think I don't. I don't see him hating on you at all, man. To be honest with you, he's, everything, his all his work is about you. Well, yeah, every, everybody's fucking shows are about me, though, Joe. I thought you knew the guy. That's what I thought you were like promoting him. No, Drew is a tender love and makes love with Sean Mendes on in the background. School. I don't know. <laughs> More right, as he doesn't get. This is funny. I hope this, uh, you know. I hope you're not setting me up here, Joey. No, come on, man. If you get started, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. It's what funny bad as hell, happen, man. Jack? Trust come me on, when I tell you. Man. <laughs> Release the Kraken. <laughs> John. Is giddy. Wow. He is laughing he and clapping. This. He's laughing along with the laugh track. He's loving it so far, just because <laughs> it's his voice. He's loving it. <laughs> are you or are you not a substitute teacher? Yes or fucking no? <laughs> uh, release the Kraken. Oh. What does that mean? <laughs> Where's the manga? Oh, yeah. NBC. <laughs> that was pretty, Joe. Thanks for turning me on. That you was gotta watch the ones with me and you. Is a under shorts. You gotta. I'm the milkshake, and and, and you're you. It's funny. And what's that one called? <laughs> Just look at the shorts, and you'll see me go down. And you see me and you as a me. I'm a milkshake, and you're and you're you. Do you guys pick up on what's really funny about what Joe Easy just said? I'm the milkshake, and, and you're, you're you. And Not you're Carl, you. the buffoon from Aquatine yeah. Hunger Force, but you. <laughs> it's that natural of a pairing. Yes. And, and literally, when I hear John talk in his normal speaking voice, or I should say cadence, it reminds me of Carl from Aquatine. Now, it's all I can think of. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but he loved it. Who are these podcasts?